All right, we'd like to welcome everyone in. Uh, game Wednesday, 6 o'clock at Ole Miss. As a reminder, Ole Miss is playing Florida tonight as well. So uh, I'll wait for that game to finish up my notes in the morning to show all the numbers are right. So uh, with that, uh, Nate, get us started, please. Uh, Dave, just what's it been like playing as a guard in this lineup since you were really recruited as a forward? Uh, it felt it feel good. Uh, just being able to take advantage of uh, smaller guards and components, but overall, it feels good uh, to be in the guard has, position. Has it changed the responsibilities a lot, or is it or very much the same as, as before? Uh, it really, it really hasn't changed a lot. It's just more of a uh, more opportunity to uh, attack downhill um, and finding spots, but other than that, it's I felt all the same. Till so the added size you all have had really helped from rebounding. Yes, sir. Thank you, Christina. Okay, so I just had a pretty general question about <clears throat> what part of your game you feel like has grown or changed the most? I mean, we just talked a little bit about you kind of playing more as a guard, but is there anything else that you feel like has changed the most since you got to Arkansas? Uh, just been just been trying to be efficient uh, around the rim and just in, in general, like picking the spots uh, to score in and things like that, uh, knowing like my strength and st sticking with the strengths more than weaknesses. And, um, and even picking back off the weaknesses, uh, like the weaknesses I have from last school is like is better now uh, for like development wise. Scotty, yeah, he's kind of sticking with that same thing. I'm curious when Arkansas staff kind of told you that you'd be a little bit more interior oriented this season. Like, is there a player that you've studied to pick up things from, or was there maybe a player that they pointed to, like maybe check this guy out? Uh, really, uh, they was just saying, uh, like you could look at anybody on the floor because you could be in, end up in any position throughout the game or during out the season, and um, more so like I knew when I was coming in that we had uh, like JD returning, um, and uh, Devo uh, returning. So I was like, I know most of I was gonna be off the ball a lot. So I just piggyback on watching a lot of basketball and just knowing how to. Get your uh, get your points and being efficient around other areas of the game. Yeah, we've heard some guys before say that Trey Wade is like the uncle of this team. Like, could you possibly like give me an example of Trey being the uncle, or yeah. and also just kind of what he's brought to this group lately? <laughs> yeah, Trey, yeah, Trey, the uncle of the team. He just <laughs> he just give us uncle vibes. He uh, yeah, old man, but. Uh, Trey, he always the the, vo the vocal leader, you know. Uh, yeah, if he sees something, he always gonna point it out and uh, let you know, you know. Um, and that's just just the way of our uncle is. Like if he see his nephews doing uh, doing something they don't need to be doing, he gonna he gonna address it right away. And that's just like on the court. If you know that one of the younger guys or anything is not doing what they're supposed to, he's he's gonna follow up behind. It, how how valuable do you think that is? Because, you know, when you guys are going through a rough stretch, Eric, a lot after games would say that, you know, a lot of a team success kind of depends on player-led, you know, leadership. Uh, it, it, it's, it's very important because um, during the midst of the game, stuff like that, you need somebody with a high, a high voice like that, like Trey, uh, and been playing college basketball for a long time to step up and be able to point out the things that uh, – that he see out there on the court is going on that uh, the other people don't see, you know, and being able to keep the team in, in order. Bob? Hey, Adisa, how's it going? Um, hey, I guess I read this in Mike's notes. I think this is still true after the weekend that Arkansas leads the nation and made free throws, and I think a second in, in attempts. Um, and, and you're a guy that's taken a lot. I think you're second on the team in attempts and you, you're shooting real well. Um, what do you think is the key to, to getting up to the free throw line that much? And obviously then, then making them. Uh, it's really, the key is really just, just being aggressive. Uh, you know, like um, we all know, like right now we're not shooting the ball as well as we want to, but 
we just we just doing what we can like to get to the rim, get foul, you know, getting foul calls, and be able to step up to the line and make shots at the free throw line. And then you, you're like I say you, you've shot I think seventy nine. You're making right at seventy six percent. Have you always been a good free throw shooter, or, or what, what? What do you think of that? What, what's the key to that for you? <laughs> Uh, I mean, not, I wouldn't say a good free throw shooter, but I used to, I mean, get to the line a lot when I was at Pitt as well, but I increased my, um, free throw percentage pretty much from what I was at Pitt. So I would think I was doing pretty good, um, free throws wise. I shoot a lot of those out of practice before practice. So I'm just trying to stay on that, that, that range of getting to the line and be able to knock it down. Is that just extra work in the gym? Have you changed your technique at all? Or what have you done to shoot that high a percentage with that volume of free throws? It's just a lot of reps and different situations of like working out um, just to get your get your mind flowing in different ways uh, throughout the course of a game when you get fouled, when you're tired, different things like that. So, yeah, because you hit, uh, you know, uh, uh, AM and taking the lead for the first time in OT6664. You go to the line, a lot of pressure. You you played for whatever minutes. I'm sure you're dog tired, but you knocked them both down to tie it back up. Those were big. Do you remember kind of what's going through your head in a situ- situation like that? Uh that we just we just need take a deep breath and we just need these points so the game could be back balanced and we could go and win this game and get this game over with. Um that's really what's going through my mind. The most is just getting getting these points on the board for our team and for us to be in a position to win. And, and then, uh, you know, I know you played real well, Pitt. The team didn't have a lot of success, you know, one loss. And you, you guys went through a rough stretch here, but now you've won four in a row. You're looks like you're back on track. I mean, how much did going to a program that, that had won big last year, how much did that influence your transfer decision? And then what's it been like being on a team that's, that, that, that's, that's winning now? I think he's frozen. <laughs> Good work, Bob. Sorry. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. We, we, okay. Bob, well, finish up that question. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Adis, uh, you, uh, you know, you played well at Pitt. The team didn't, didn't win a lot. How big was going to a program like Arkansas that had won big last year? How much did that influence your decision? And then what's it like being on a team that's, that's on a good roll now? Uh, I guess, yeah, we, we didn't have too much success uh, my last uh, my last school, but – it just taught me a lot. Uh, it takes more than then. It takes a lot to win, you know, and it's hard to win at a high level. Um, but coming here, uh, it may it may it was the best decision, you know, just seeing that how they did last year and how the players like gel together to get to that point, you know, end of the year. And it just made me made my decision that I want to come here and be a part of that family. And once I was here, we had a we had a ups and downs, but now we starting to click again, like we was at the beginning of the year, and it's just it's lovely to be on a winning team like this. Okay, I might have a couple more, but I'll turn it back. Sorry about the freeze and thing. I wasn't something Very something good. I said. <laughs> Curtis. Now, Aldis, you guys are playing well now on a pretty good roll. I'm just curious, you know, what what do you think takes this team to the next level? How does this group get better? Is there an area uh, that you think could do that? Um, it's just really on the defensive end. Um, if we locked in and engaged on defense uh, the whole game, um, it's I don't see any I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be winning the way we are, you know. Um, and that's what we pride on. 40 minutes of defense intensity. If we're doing that and offense going to come into play. And then I just curious, I know you guys have a couple days of prep left, but what, you know, what are your initial thoughts on Ole Miss and, and the challenge you faced with them on Wednesday? Um, I know Ole Miss is a, a pretty good team. Uh, they like to get up and down the court. Uh, they got nice, I mean, a couple of good transfers came in as well. 
uh, that I played against uh, at my old school. So I know they're going to be on their uh, P's and Q's about the game. So I just know they, they I know that they, they pride on playing hard the whole game. So we just should, uh, think we should just prep. We're going to prep on them and get ready for it. I know they got a game tonight, so try to take their legs away as possible. All right, Adis, thanks. Appreciate your time. Thanks, sir.